thank you. Thank you, Beth. And thank you to all of you for, for enjoying your lunch with us today with Metro State's uh, IPD department. I'm excited to have you here to talk about change. It, change, it can be painful, it can be difficult, but it doesn't have to be as painful as it is sometimes. And when I'm looking at some of those statistics that Beth shared based on the, the survey that she did, and knowing that there is 0% of our audience today that is in senior leadership, and 60% of you see yourself as those individual contributors or staff, I want you to know this, that you don't have to be in senior leadership. 40% of, of you are in middle management, and there, there are things you can do as, as a leader in middle management, but also as an individual. And that's sa the same for those of you who are those individual contributors. Even understanding how change works and then making some choices on what you can do when you're interacting with that change will help you to deal with it better. All right. Hey, so let's Jeanette, sorry, Jeanette, real quick. We the chat is not enabled. So they should use okay. the QA, but you use it just like the chat. So you open it up and you type your um, responses into the QA. Perfect. That is helpful. Thank you, Beth. All right, so here, here's the first poll. You should see that on your screen. And I just wanna know, how do you feel about change when it happens at work? Do you love it? Are you like, meh? Or are you like, ah, more change? I can't stand it. So just take a, just a couple seconds and put your answer there and then I'll share it with you. Just kind of testing the temperature of the room. Um, yeah, and sometimes it can depend. Those of you who are saying, what, 48% of you say the rate of change has increased since the pandemic, you might just have change fatigue. It's very possible. Um, you know, some of you are like 38%, it's staying the same. You could still have change fatigue if you feel like it ramped up during the pandemic and now it's kind of stayed the same. All right, if you haven't complete, com um, completed the poll, I'm going to ask you to do that now because I'm going to share you those results. We have almost everyone has completed it. All right, I'm going to end it and I'm going to share those results so you can see it. So you know that you are not alone. So there are a couple of you that are like, oh my gosh, I love change, which can be great. Uh, we'll be doing some reflection here and maybe that will help you. The fact that you love change, you may see some of your answers reflected in that. Um, but the majority of you, 63% are like, eh, you know, maybe you can take it or leave it, or maybe you just accept it because it happens. And then there are 25% of you that are just like, oh my gosh, change, really? And there's an old quote that says, when you're through changing, you're through. You know, think about that. Or the only thing that we can guarantee that won't change is that things will continue to change. But it can be hard. You know, I won't take that away from you. All right. Well, let's see if we can get you to a point where maybe you're not in love with change. A couple of you might be. But maybe the rest of you can say, you know, what? change is OK and I will feel better equipped to deal with it. All right. So, oh, excuse me, looking at a couple sides of change to set up what I'm going to talk about today. So on the left side, we have the tools, tools that we use to help us navigate change. And I'm going to give you some tools today. So I hope that you have a piece of paper and a pen because we're also going to do a quick little assessment and you'll need paper and pen to do that. So that's one side of change. Another side of change are stakeholder management, right? Do we know who our stakeholders are? Are we managing them appropriately so that we can accelerate change? You know, it, that could be communication. It could be processes. And we can also look at sites of change that as we go through change and experience it individually, but we also experience it as groups or as teams. And I'm gonna first be talking about more of yourself as an individual in change. And then a little bit later, we'll move into looking at how teams move through, through change and what are some tips and tools that you can use for that. So we're gonna, jump into figuring out what your change response is. So what I would like you to do as an individual, think about a change you are currently experiencing at work. And you're gonna use that for the foundation 
to answer these questions that I'm going to share with you. So think about a current change and then grab that pen and a sheet of paper. And I want you to divide it into quadrants because what I'm going to be doing is giving you a series of statements that you are going to score. And each of these series of statements will be a set that then tells us what is your response to change given that change that you're thinking about at work right now. All right, so here's a scoring system if you want to jot it down. When I give you each of these statements, if you highly likely behave that way, I want you to give yourself two points. If you possibly do, give yourself one point. And if you're like, that doesn't sound like me at all during change, then go ahead and give yourself zero points for that. All right, so all of these will begin with this sentence. When the change happened, that change that you are experiencing right now at work, for set one, I worked longer than before. If you say highly likely, give yourself two points. If you're like possibly, I worked longer than before, one point. And if highly unlikely, that doesn't sound like you, you're gonna give yourself zero points for that one. All right, so thinking of that current change, did you put off other tasks? Or are you finding that you're putting them off? Have you stopped asking questions about the change? Are you talking about work? Even when you're not at work, you're with your family, you're out with your friends, and you keep talking about work and the change going on at work. Are you working when you're not at work? And think of this relative to what you normally do when you're not thrust into a change. Are you working more when you're not at work than you were before? And then the last one, are you skipping your vacation time? Or maybe you could even think about, are you skipping your breaks? Are you skipping your lunches differently than before? If, you're our, if you, you've always been a lunch skipper, then that doesn't sound like you. But if you didn't skip your lunches and now you are, that might be highly likely. All right, that's set one. We're gonna go to the next one, set number two. So when this change happened, did you find that you were disagreeing with the direction of the change? And maybe openly, maybe inwardly you disagree. Did you point out why that change isn't going to work? Did you find yourself enlisting other people to your point of view, to your side? So it could be your coworkers, um, it could be your vendors, your customers. Did you keep your ears open so that you could say, you know, here's a weakness in this change plan, which could be tied to this is why it's not going to work. Well, maybe they haven't thought it out or they haven't involved the right stakeholders. Did you just stand firm and wait to see what would happen? So change is announced and you just stood there and said, you know what, let's wait and see. Did you refuse to take action? Well, they can tell me I need to do this process differently, but I'm, I'm going to keep doing it the way I've always done it. All right, now let's go on to set number three. So when this change is happening at work, are you rejecting the plan? Like you've just shut it down. Or have you maybe disconnected emotionally from that change? Have you looked for a way out? Like, how can I not participate in this change? This could be something as simple as not participating to saying, you know what, I'm gonna go find a new job. Did you avoid getting involved in the change? Maybe talking about it, attending meetings, thinking about it. Did you position yourself away from the fray? And what we mean by that is, you know what, the change is happening over here and I'm just gonna stand back. Or sometimes I think of this as like just flying under the radar. You just, you just are not going to be around the change, people talking about the change. Or maybe you pretended it's not happening. It's not happening to me. Yeah, they said this is gonna change, but it's not gonna happen. All right, now set number four. When the change happened, did you just think nothing about it? 
do nothing, say nothing. Did you just work at status quo? Meaning you just did your work as you've always done it. No change whatsoever. Did you maybe experience a feeling of paralysis? Like is this change and I, I don't even know how to function anymore. Or did you maybe just feel numb to it? Like an out of body experience. The change is happening. I understand it's happening, but I just feel numb, like not good, not bad, just numb to the situation. All right. So what I'm going to ask you to do now is total your points for each of those sets. So the maximum you could have for any one set would be 12 points if you did highly likely for all six. And have you totaled those points? And when you have your total, what I'm going to share with you is each type of reaction to change. So that first set, if you are finding that your number is highest, your total is highest for this set, what you tend to do is just throw yourselves into change, right? You've just, you flung yourself into it. And when we do it, it's kind of a heads down and I'm just gonna produce, produce, right? I'm not gonna question the change. I'm just gonna do what I'm told. And let me say, this is one of the four reactions to change that we're gonna talk about all of them are risky. All of them create problematic situations, but we need to be aware of how we're reacting to the change before we can do anything about it. So fling, head down, I'm just gonna work, I'm gonna do what I'm told, I'm not gonna look for any way to improve this, I'm just gonna keep my mouth shut and do my work. Um, and you can see maybe the backside to flinging yourself is that, that self-care. Right? You're not taking care of, of yourself. You're giving all of your time and your energy to that change. And that can impact other things that you're doing at work. It can impact things outside of work, your relationships with people. All right. If your score was highest for set two, your tendency in that change was to fight. I'm a person. This, this is overall, this tends to be how I respond to change more than the other three. I fight it. Right, I If I don't like it, I'm going to say I don't like it. And I'm going to say, here are the reasons. And why didn't you think about this? Um, you know, I'll become very verbal. You might do it in a much quieter way. But when we fight, we tend to just kind of, you know, I'm going to cross my arms and I'm just going to, I'm going to wait and see. You, you prove it to me that this change is a good thing. You convince me. All right. So when we fight, now we're putting our energy on not helping to move that change, right? Because we're just fighting the change. All right, the third set. You might have a tendency to take flight from change. Like you just, you don't like the way it feels. You don't like what's happening. So you're just going to really remove yourself from the situation and not get involved. But when we're at work and change is happening, Change is happening just because we pretend it isn't happening and just because we're not getting involved isn't going to change the fact that change is happening. So this can be a really dangerous place to be because you may find that the train has left the station and you're still at the station. And long term, that can affect your success in the workplace. All right, then the last one, this is freeze, right? Change happens and I just, I'm, I'm at a loss. I don't even know what to do. And this could come from maybe being overwhelmed by change. And again, if we go back, 48% of you are saying that you are experiencing more change since the pandemic. So, you know, you might just be like, I, I have nothing left, right? I just, I got to come in. I can, I can do what I can do. But again, if you're first, that change is still happening. That train has still left the station. And sometimes when people freeze, they tend to be very quiet and other people don't realize that they're really struggling with that change. So if you find yourself in freeze, I want you to acknowledge it so that you can take the next step to do something about it. All right, so I'm going to have you share in the chat or Q&A since the chat is not uh, functioning right now. What was your response to the change? Were you a person that is fleeing? Are you fight? 
Are you flight or are you freeze? I'm just going to keep my eyes open on that, on the Q&A. And as people are um, sharing their answers here, I'll, I'll say this. You may not always have the same reaction to change. You may Your response will change with different changes. Uh, but that's why I wanted you to kind of ground it in a current change that you're experiencing. And again, no response to change is going to be helpful if you get stuck in it. All right. Uh, I, I will... Maybe, Jeanette, if we tell them that you're not going to read their name out loud, you'll read the responses, but not their names. Maybe more I people. I definitely are... not read their name out loud. Yeah, maybe but more I people. will share too. some of the responses and they can yeah. probably see the responses as well. Um, so I'm, I'm seeing a smattering. The only one I'm not seeing here right now is, let's see, is uh, flight. Flight is the only one that I'm not seeing. So, and some of you might have said, oh my gosh, I didn't have pen and paper. That's okay. I just want you to be aware of what these are and put that on, on your radar. Okay. So I'm seeing freeze and, and fight. I'm seeing flight. Yeah. Okay. We have them all represented here. So thank you for sharing that. So what I want to do is move into some tools. I'm going to give you one tool for each of these. And I, and I hope if you want to take a picture of the screen, if you want to write it down, so for those of you who find yourself flinging yourselves into change, I want you to set and enforce boundaries, both personal and work. Because otherwise this change might, you know, take over one part of your life and then harm the other part of your life. So think about what are the boundaries, whether it's, you know, I'm, I'm going to commit to taking a 15 minute lunch or I'm going to go out to dinner and the, the only thing I'm not going to talk about is what's happening at work. Um, or I'm going to go spend time with my family this weekend and I'm not going to open up my email at all. So the best tool I think I can give you here for those of you who fling is set and enforce those work boundaries and those personal boundaries. All right, for those of you who find yourselves responding in fight, ask more questions. Not questions to lead you to the answer that you want, but more questions to gain understanding. Like, how was this decision made? Who was involved in the decision? You know, wh why was this decision made? Um, you know, are there, are there alternatives? Did you think about this? Did you think about that? Because if you can understand, it's going to be easier to get behind that change. All right, for those of you that experience flight, explore how the change could actually help you, could help you do your work easier, better, faster. Explore how it can help your team. Explore how it can make you a better manager or a better contributor to your team. So try to find you know, ways in which that change may in the long run actually make things better for you. And then for those of you who experience freeze, start with the smallest action. Pick one thing and take action on that one thing. Um, because if you don't, you're probably going to stay frozen. So just one thing, and maybe it's, I'm going to ask a question in a meeting. Maybe it's going to be, I'm gonna actually sit next to people who are talking about the change. I'm not gonna say anything, but I'm gonna sit and I'm gonna listen. So just one small action. All right, so that's real briefly, just your response to change and a tool depending upon your response. What I wanna move into now is the change curve. And this is based on some, if you've ever heard of the grief process that we go through by Elizabeth Kubler-Ross, we experience very similar things in change. And we're gonna look at this on how teams of people or groups of people move through change. So not so much as on that side of individual, but more on the side of a group or a team. All right, so let's talk about how change happens. First of all, on this left side, we have ending, which seems counterintuitive. Like why is the ending, you know, at the beginning of this and the beginning is at the end of this. What this represents is it's ending the way we used to do things. 
right? Let's say the change is a new process. It's the old process is being ended. And then we're going to instill this new process. The beginning on the other end is when that change has fully taken root, right? We now, we're no longer trying to make the change happen. It's done. We're, we're through to the other side. But there's some stuff that happens in between the end of the old way and the beginning of the new way. So there are four phases of change that I'm going to talk about. And I'm also going to talk about some of the emotions that go along with it. So in, um, in this change curve, you'll see where it dips down, right? We normally think of a bell curve. Well, we flip that upside down here because you'll see these emotions as I talk about them, kind of how it plummets. And then we start to have some more positive emotions. And in the middle is this really critical transition phase. But what I'll tell you is ending the old way of doing things and getting to that transition, it's messy. It's messy. It can be hard. It can be painful. It might bring those answers of yuck. I, this is how I feel about change at work. Um, it might bring them meh, but it's probably not going to bring, bring the I love change at work. So this very first phase is called status quo. We know, we know we need to change something, but everything's at status quo. Here's what happens with your teams. They are going to be in denial that the change is happening or that the change needs to happen. And then they will move into being a little shocked, like, oh my gosh, uh, I don't know how to do anything differently. I don't even know what we're supposed to be doing different. Nobody knows. I'm shocked that something's going to change. So that's that status quo phase. Then our team or our group will move into what is called the disruption phase. And when we're in the disruption phase, the change, it's staring us in the face. And some of the emotions we'll see people exhibit is fear, anger, and frustration. Because we can no longer deny the change and work at status quo. We know now that we actually have to be doing something different but it doesn't feel good. It, it's hard. Let's say it's, you know, learning a new software program. And it's like, oh my gosh, I have to, you know, the other one, I knew how to use the other one. This new one, I'm starting to use it and I'm frustrated with it. I don't feel like it's as intuitive or you know, whatever it is. But when you are here in this phase, what I want you to know that fear, anger, and frustration are perfectly acceptable. And as our team moves through change, they have to move through that status quo and that denial and shock. They have to go there before they can get to the disruption phase, before they're going to feel the fear and the anger and the frustration. Now, those of you who are managers, it can be really frustrating in its own right when you have your team that's in this disruption phase. Because, you know, productivity may be difficult. You might have, you know, employee engagement might go down. You might have employees who, who are unhappy and it's creating a lot of tension in the workplace or in your department. But what I want you to know is that when people are going through this, the good news is they're out of the status quo quos, status quo phase. They're actually moving on this change curve. We don't want to get them stuck. We don't want to let people end up in the disruption phase and maybe be angry and never be able to move beyond that. We need to keep moving them to transit uh, to that through that transition to accelerate that change. And I'll be giving you some tools for each of these phases in a little bit uh, that will help you to continue to accelerate and move through the transition and all the way through to the beginning. All right. So once they've worked through fear and anger and frustration, then they get to this beautiful transition part, and then they enter the exploration phase. And I like to say, this is like dipping your toe in the water, right? Taking the temperature of the water. So when we're in exploration, what our team is going to do is we're going to see them get a little creative about that change. It might be how they're talking about it. It might be how they're interacting with the change might be how they're using the change, how they're responding to it, but they're going to get creative and put their toe in the water, so to speak. And when they get creative, that will allow them then to move into acceptance. Now, they may still not love the change. They may still not be, you know, 100% on board, 
but they have at least admitted to themselves your, your team is going, okay, you know what? The train has left the station. We're not going to stop the train. So we better run and we better hop on that train. And then they move to hope. They start to see maybe how this could make the workplace better, make your organization better, make their work better, how they function as a team better. So when, we, when you see people move to through the transition and get a little bit creative, maybe with even the questions they're asking, that I think that's a beautiful, beautiful time because you know that they've, they've gotten through the muck, they've gotten through the tough stuff, through the disruption, and they're here where they're like, okay, I'm gonna put the toe, now maybe I'm gonna put all my toes in the water, right? Maybe I'm gonna hope that if I get up to my knees in you know this, this water of change, that um, you know, I'm going to be able to keep walking and I'm going to be safe. All right, so that's exploration. When we help our team get successfully through that, then they move to the rebuilding phase. And when our team gets to the rebuilding phase, here's what happens. They will become enthusiastic about the change, like energy is going to pick up around the change. They are probably going to be champion, championing the change to other people, trying to get other people to come along. Um, you may feel a shift on your team where they're now working together and their productivity is increasing, their engagement is increasing. And then they move into full commitment. And then once they commit to the change and they discover that's their new way of doing things, then we're at the beginning of the new way. Right, we've gotten through the change and we've established our new way of doing things. Now teams can get stuck. They can get stuck in status quo. They can get stuck in disruption. They could get stuck in exploration. And there's, when I think of change, leaders have a responsibility to their people to help them through change. But we also as individuals have a responsibility to help ourselves and help the people we work with through change. All right, so let's talk about now how the timing of change happens. For this example, I'm gonna talk about three waves. In all reality, you could have two waves of change, maybe not that common. You may have six waves of change or seven waves of change, but for this example, we're gonna talk about three waves of change. So let's say you have a group that is made up of senior leaders, project sponsors, and board of directors. And they are the first people to realize something is not working and we need to make a change. So they will say, oh, okay, you know, we need to end the way that we did things. There, there's a need for change here. But they're the first ones to know. Then you get a second group. And maybe this group is made up of managers, project members, your team leads. And they find out about it later. And then you get wave three. Maybe that's everyone else in your organization. And they find out it, about it even later. Here's what it looks like. So we've got wave one, right? These senior, senior leaders, for example. Let's say they realize that a change needed to be made on January 1st of this year, right? Okay, we got it in the way we're doing things. And then they get into this disruption phase right before that transition. And they were there at the beginning of this month. And maybe by the end of September, they are at the beginning. They have completely accepted. They are committed. They are enthusiastic about the change. But wave two, remember wave two, these managers, the um, project team members, the leads, they didn't find out about it in January. They didn't find out until April. And then they don't get close to that transition phase until July. And they are actually not going to be fully on board until February of next year. Now, these, these time frames that I'm giving you from you know April to February of next year, that's 10 months. Change could take two years. It could take three years. It could be shorter than that. So this, this timeline is just an example. All right, now we've got wave three, everyone else. Well, they don't even know yet. It, the idea of change and like they're going to have to stop doing something and do it differently, that's not even going to happen until June. And they're going to get to that transition phase maybe in October. But when they fully adopt that change, 
and it's not going to happen until the end of March next year. So what that looks like is we have a wave one is starting in January and by this fall, they're fully on board. They have already moved through the change curve. They have moved through the emotions, through the transition. They're fully committed. But then you've got the second wave that's not there till February of next year. And then the third wave that's not there until the end of March. Now, why is this important? This is important because wherever you and your team are at on the change curve, we forget that people at, are at other places. So we may be already through that transition phase and we're like, what's wrong with these people? Why are they fighting this change? Why are they still being so disruptive? Well, it could be because they're in a different wave. Maybe they didn't find out about the change as soon as you find out about it. So we have the status quo. We have disruption, exploration, and rebuilding. What I'm going to have you share in the Q&A is which phase of change do you think your team is in now relative, relative to the change that you started with? When I asked you to say, think about a current change and then evaluate your response to change. So your status quo, are you disruption, are you exploration, or are you in rebuilding? All right, I'm seeing some exploration. I'm seeing disruption. I'm seeing rebuilding. Whew, rebuilding, you get to at least catch your breath now. You know, and um, for those of you who are in rebuilding, I want you to think about you might be further along in the change curve than other groups of people are, than other teams. And even when we think about working across departments, across teams in an organization, and if you feel it's difficult to get your work done because somebody else hasn't adapted to that change, think about where they are. And, and maybe they're in a different wave. Um, okay, what else do I say? Rebuilding for sure. Yeah, rebuilding feels good. But we, if you look back, I'm sure that you can identify, even those of you who are in exploration, you can identify the other phases that your team was in. All right, thank you for sharing those answers. Now let's talk about some tools for each of those phases. Because as you go forward with change, um, each change is gonna bring upon this change curve that you're going to have to go through status quo and through disruption and exploration and rebuilding. So the goal is to accelerate it, not to allow our, our groups, our teams to get stuck. Because if they get stuck, then our change effort fails. So how do we do that? Some tips for those of you, uh, when you're experiencing status quo, you've got to communicate more frequently, more often, uh, more thoroughly. Here's the thing about human nature. When we don't have all the pieces to a puzzle, we fill in the missing pieces and our brain has a negativity bias and it will always fill it in with the negative. For example, if you have somebody who shows up, you're supposed to meet them at a restaurant and they show up late, you're probably thinking, oh, you know, maybe they got a flat tire, they ran out of gas, they were held up at work, um, they, you know, they're just not being respectful of my time. We don't say, well, maybe they ran into an old friend and they're reconnecting and they're going to show up and they're going to be so happy. We don't do that. So we increase communication and share information as quickly as we can so that people can actually acknowledge that the change is going to happen, right? So that they can move to that disruption phase. Um, encourage questions. Ask them, what questions do you have? Not, do you have any questions? That's close-ended. And most people will say no, but what questions do you have? Or I want one question from each of you. And then provide resources. And resources could be access to you. Resources could be access to information. Uh, resources could be a place for them to, you know, to talk about um, the shock of the change. All right, let's move on to disruption. Acknowledge the impact of the change on that team. Yes, I realize this means X, Y, and Z. 
Yes, I understand we are asking you to do A, B, and C. Just acknowledge it, validate it, and then create space for them to share their feelings. Because as they're going through like that fear and that anger and that frustration, if you don't create space for them to share that with you, then it becomes uncontrolled. And then it becomes gossip. And then they start to rile other people up. And then you get a lot of angry people. And then they get stuck in that disruption phase. So where is a space where they can share their, their feelings? Um, be more sensitive because they are going to be, these are a lot of negative emotions. And remember, if, if you are a manager and your team is going through it and you knew about that change before they did, you might be further along in that change curve. So don't forget to be sensitive to how they're feeling because you were there too. And then observe, listen and watch what is going on. You know, listen for what isn't necessarily being said so that you can inquire and give people what they need to move through the disruption phase to get through that transition. All right, moving to exploration. Uh, give people latitude to test and explore with the change. You know, within reason, right? We want to give people boundaries. But if they're like, well, I would like to try to do it this way or at this time, give them latitude um, so that they can take some ownership. Increase support. If it's uh, learning or education or training support, if it's an opportunity to, to share their ideas, uh, provide pro, definitely provide training. If you're asking them to do anything that's vastly different that requires training, um, sometimes change efforts fail because we don't think about the time it takes to train, the resources it takes to train, and change will never be successful if people need to be trained and they're not. And be patient. Be patient as people, remember, they're exploring, they're dipping their toes in the water, right? Maybe they're not ready to dive in yet. That's okay. Let them dip their toes and wade into the, the change water as they feel comfortable. And then finally, rebuilding. Sometimes we get to rebuilding. We're like, all right, people are excited. They're committed. We're good to go. What I recommend is don't forget to recognize at all levels in your organization. Make it a point to recognize what people are doing to contribute to that change to how they've helped accelerate that change. And then take time to celebrate with your team, especially when change is really painful. Take time to celebrate and then check back in. Like, are they still okay? Are they still on board? Are there maybe opportunities for improvement? What we don't want to happen is that when people get to rebuilding that we say, okay, done, we're on to the next change. We still need to be um, in communication and um, connected, connected to our teams in the workplace. All right, so we're here at um, 12.53, and I wanna leave some time for some questions um, and answers. And I wanna leave you with this thought as well uh, from Jeff Bezos, what's dangerous is not to evolve. So even for those of you that are like, ugh, change, or you're like, meh, meh, you know, change, whatever. It's really dangerous if we don't evolve. If you think of, think of um, you know, organizations who didn't involve, evolve with technology, think about people in the workplace who don't evolve with technology, right? It's really dangerous. And even if you're working in government or you're working in education or finance or manufacturing, to evolve, to get better, to become more efficient, to become more effective, we have to change. We have to change the way that we do things. Um, and as people, you know, as you write your questions, I do want to share one thing with you that's on the other side of change, that there is a whole move since the pandemic where employees want to be treated as whole humans. Meaning the days of you have your personal self and your work self as being two separate entities, that, that doesn't really exist anymore. There's really a groundswell of people saying, you know, I want to have community at work. I want to have resources at work. I want the people I work with to recognize that outside of the workplace, that I'm a whole person and some of those things 
outside of the workplace, I can actually apply here. And that I also want my employer and my coworkers to understand that I have needs as a human being, not just as an employee. So there's, there's a lot of research around that. And I think that that's going to continue to change and evolve. And I think leaders, there's, you know, we can lead with our head, which makes sense, or we can lead with our heart. But it's leaders who lead with both their head and their heart that are going to be able to usher people and accelerate them through change. So I just have that, Beth, I just threw that up there so they know how to get a hold of you if they need to. So any questions that we can answer? And, and I'll just say too, if you don't wanna take the time to type it into the Q&A, um, you can raise your hand and we can hit a button on our end and allow you to talk. Um, do you see, there's a question in the Q&A for you, Jeanette. Ooh, let, are there any authors or books you would recommend for additional learning when dealing with change? And you're welcome for the presentation. You know, that's a, that's a, that's a difficult one to answer because I think it depends on what you're doing, like which part of change you're, you're struggling with. You know, is it about, um, you know, managing your stakeholders? Is it, I, the best thing I would honestly say is we have an entire change course that can help you through all components of change. And I'm not saying that just to plug it. I'm saying that because I really, it takes you all the way from identifying who the stakeholders are, you know, through your communication plan. And it covers some of the things that we talked about today. So, yeah, I think without more specific information, it's hard for me to say, oh, yeah, here's a book. While we wait for others, I'll just share. Um, I love the one kind of nugget because clearly I've I've heard this presentation before, but still pulled something new out. Not this presentation, but your change course in general um, was instead of saying, are there any questions? I like that you say, what are your questions? Or even uh, with your team saying, everybody come up with a question. I thought that was I thought that was a great way to make sure people are processing the change and processing what's going on. So, um, and Janae, you can do further research. I also thought it was interesting. I had kind of two changes in my head. One is our website change where I am leading that effort, not doing the work, but, you know, leading it. And I was all about that change. And then over here, I was thinking about um, in a couple of weeks, we transition um to Workday software. Hey, Metro State and Men's State colleagues, Workday, am I right? Um, and uh, that one, I have a whole, I'm wave three on that one. So on the wave one and two, I'm like, woo, on wave three, I'm like not having it. I'm just not having it. Yeah. So, um, and, and you may feel Beth, like I just don't have the capacity, right? It's one more change. I just don't, I don't have the headspace or the bandwidth. You're so kind. I'm thinking it's as long as I'm in control, I'm okay. Uh, but <laughs> <laughs> so that could be too. Um, all right. If you stop sharing, Jeanette, I will I share will my screen, but people can still submit questions. Yes, they can. Um, I have them up in case they pop in. So um, I will just say that coming up uh, in May, the Expert Insights is taking a sabbatical. We use our website to register um, people for X advertise and register. And with the change in our website, we are uh, mitigating our risk by um, not using it to register people um, and not having some of you have a bad experience that we aren't able to transition that over. So, um, so we're taking May off to focus on making sure the website um, registration system works, but we're back in June. Um, Eric from our program, he's the IPD DEI program specialist. Um, he will be presenting and, and you can see the topic is TBD, but I can tell you that there's a short list. We just haven't uh, made the final decision. So um, we look forward to having you join us for that. I would also like to thank Jeanette for her time today um, and uh, presentation. As I said, I, I'm part of the change course and I still learned something new today. So thank you, Jeanette. I appreciate um, appreciate that. Totally. I'm not Happy seeing any other questions. So um, thank you everybody for joining us today. We, we appreciate um, your support of the expert